everybody. It's Pete Carmasino here at Chaken Analytics. This is the halftime show on Stock Charts TV. Each and every week, we kind of go over what's happening here in the market. And today, we're going to talk about a lot of things going on, right? We we always have sort of a list of things we kind of go through. I'm going to flip the switch a little bit and go the other way today. I'm going to look at um, the Chaken system first and talk about some things happening in there. There's some uh, stocks that are big movers on the day, like Ford, uh, I believe Yelp. Uh, some news that came out on these names. We'll just kind of browse through some of those names that are kind of moving around here on the on the markets right now. Uh, but in general, um, going to go over some different things. We'll look at oil today for sure. Uh, we're going to look at emerging markets. We're going to look at uh, another indicator here. Now, this one I'm saving until last. So you got to watch the video all the way through. The last part of this video, I'm going to go over something that I think is something that everybody should have in their toolbox, right? It's the one indicator that could help you sort of determine the trends and how things are kind of playing out. But you have to look at it in the order that it's sort of set up in. In other words, you want to look at it versus a sector or versus the market or versus, uh, you know, either another uh, regime like bond levels, whether it's prices or yields, however you want to look at bonds. We know they're inversely related, you know, but this one set up here that I think was really the tell for the year, it was part of the reason, right? It wasn't the only reason. That's, there's never just one indicator that's going to tell you exactly what to do. But I'm going to just go over that today. That's going to be the last thing we talk about today. But before that, we're going to talk about, uh, look at small caps here today. We're going to look at oil services. Um, we're going to look at some relative strength changes on the upside, on the downside. And then, and then I have a special list here. Uh, it's called upcoming earnings ideas. Okay, so we'll look at that as well. So there's a, obviously a ton of names in there only because it's earnings season and that's what's moving markets, right? So today we've got the markets up pretty nicely, uh, you know, decent number, nothing uh, running away here. The NASDAQ is up pretty big again, another 84 points, uh, better than a half a percent right now. And uh, S&P and NASDAQ, I call them flat, but you know, they're up about 0 0.2 to 0 0.25, 0, you know, a quarter of a point or so, nothing crazy there. But uh, VIX is elevated again today, starting to move higher, and that's interesting during earnings season. But even the the you know the Russell 2K, the IWM, is up one and a quarter percent today. And so we'll look at that, and I'll show you a chart that uh, I tweeted out. We'll take a look at that, and that's the other thing. Follow me on Twitter. I'll show you our, my Twitter handle today. We'll look at a couple of things that we talked about on Twitter there as well. It's at Pete Carmesino. It's in the bottom of the video. We could see the link in there. Click on there. Throw me a like or two. I'd really appreciate it. Certainly. Give me a like on the video too if you do like what you see. So let's dive into these charts and see what's going on. All right, folks, we're here at the chart here on Yelp. Uh, you can see I've got the S&P pulled up here. Those are the list of the names in the S&P. We'll go look at some of those names as well. But let's look at the names that are really the biggest movers today. And Yelp got a big upgrade here. You can see down here we got a little news level here. It says uh, Yelp rallies after Goldman Sachs upgrades. They upgraded it to a buy. Uh, the stock's been moving. Now, I'm going to say this has sort of been on our radar. Um, a lot of these interactive media companies have. And if I click that, it'll bring up all the names in that group. I don't want to do that right now. But it's up 10% on Yelp right now. Uh, big, big move. You can see this. Got a, we got a little one-day chart in here. We'll go look. It was really a gap up at the open and then kind of plateauing slightly. But, um, you know, when Goldman gives you an upgrade um, and you're a two or $3 billion market cap, you're probably going to get some uh, activity on the day. So that's nice to see if you're uh, long the stock. And had you been following sort of our system, the first thing that changed here was the rating. The second thing was obviously the relative strength. It got you into an interesting setup here. I mean, uh, rising off of this long, long-term base here, I, you know, I'd say it's about six, seven months or so of a base. I don't know if this is really a, the equivalent of a cup and handle, but I see sort of a smaller one here. You can see that handle formed here. And then once it broke out, we're in that 36, again, that high, that 34 to $35 level. It was really sort of something that should have been on the radar. Now it is overbought. Don't get me, don't get me wrong here. Um, but at the same time, um, it's got a spike up here above these volatility bands. Just got to be careful. I don't want to chase it, but I said it was one of the stocks uh, that we were going to look at today just because it was, Sort of a popular popular name uh, because of the news. The other one was Ford, right? They lowered the price of their um, electric uh, Ford F one hundred and fifty. I guess shareholders didn't like it, but again, another name that had popped early on with a rating change up and the relative strength move here. Not so much. It's a, kind of a similar chart in a way, but more of a downtrend to this one. But when it started to move higher, you see the slope of what we call our long term trend here, which is the double exponential moving average. 
uh, of the 200 day moving average. Once that started to slope higher, it looked a lot more um, trend following type setup than anything. But it was, you know, it's amazing how it came back and tested that. I, I kind of, every time I see it, I, I just shake my head a little bit. But, you know, technical analysis is what it is. And you've got the money flow there was in your favor. We were a little overbought, but it continued higher. Oh, got oversold here, stayed around 14 and then popped. But now it's right back only because it's news driven. So you let this thing settle out. I don't want to chase it either, but we know who Ford is. I mean, it's an interesting name. Pays a 4% dividend at the level here. It's probably going to get better. Uh, this is yesterday's, or should I say Friday's close. So probably be a little bit better than 4.01% if it closes at these levels. But Again, the idea is don't chase every name that's in the news. Uh, look at those charts and, you know, have some sort of disciplined process about how you approach these buys or sells. Okay, one of the sectors I wanted to look at was the OIH. And, said, and as I said, I, I said, I'll show you uh, something here on Twitter. Again, this is uh, my Twitter page here. It's at P Carmesino. You see, I've got some activity here. So let's check this one out. This is a tweet I did on the OIH, right? And I said, this one week price change, this was an incredible setup. Look at all these names and how they were changing. All right, we were talking about 12%. I've never heard of these. some of these names, right? Noble I've had, but not NEX or Cactus or these other names, certainly Transocean, up 14%, 13.98. Another one up 7%, 5%, 10%. I mean, these are big names, right? Halliburton. So what was happening in this, in this setup? We, we were just seeing something change, right? There was some activity here. And that's the chart from last week when this was trading somewhere around 321 or so. If I go to today's chart, we're at 323. It certainly pulled back and got a little overbought. There's no doubt this is overbought. But what I'm looking at here is an identifying trend change just in the group itself. And so... If I went and looked at, if I pulled up all the names in this ETF, right, I just hit the ETF, all the names come up. I'm going to show you how we do this. And then I go to the health check, the taken portfolio health check. I don't have a lot of bullish names in here. I'm okay with that. I'm going to show you why, right? A lot of those names are still in this central zone right now this week right, which was last week, uh, is not as big as the previous week. But you still see very positive trend changes, positive movement in the names. And some of these have actually turned bullish, okay? So that's why I say follow me on Twitter. You'll catch some of these tidbits once in a while. Um, you know, we pop some things out there that I think are interesting. You know, we try to talk about, you know, keep it market related. I'll throw some personal things on there once in a while. It's no big deal. But, you know, once in a while, you, you should be checking these out just to see you know what we're seeing i even talked about the iwm i'll bring it up right now let's take a look and see what's happening if i pull up iwm here on our charts all right what do i see i see not yet i don't see this yet right on our charts i don't see the trend change happening not yet but i do see certainly a range bound situation here on IWM itself, which is really the ETF that tracks the Russell 2000. Now, if I go to a five-year chart, let's see where we are on a longer term. We've got to zoom out a little bit, right? We're still in a bit of a downtrend, but you cannot deny this base here between that 170 and really uh, sort of a ceiling at around 182 to 190. Um, and, you know, where we are today is really up to 200 or so. You could say some of that traded to 198, uh, even as high as 203. So between that 170 and 200, that 30 point range, it's sort of been basing here, but nothing really identifiable as a, as a massive trend change. But if I go to the ACP platform, I start to see sort of sprouts of bullishness here in the small caps. Um, I certainly want to be a believer. I'm just not there yet. But at the same time, I cannot deny a few things. One, the 50 over the 200 is certainly um, changing trend. And actually, this is the 55 EMA that I draw on here. But down here are the 50 and the 200, but these are the ratio charts. So this is IWM to the Qs, certainly putting in a base here and looked like it broke the downtrend. And certainly on the S&P, the same situation, another ratio. There's your trend down, sideways movement. We talked about that base. That's almost maybe a triple bottom here and then started to break out above the downtrend. So I think there's room here. I, I just don't know exactly what the catalyst can be. It's been a massive PE expansion, um, you know, in the past X amount of months, but I just was tweeting something out here. I thought it was funny. I just said, you know, IWM, we see you, we see what's happening here. We can see that you're putting in 
a base here. And then obviously there may be some changes on this sort of section of the market, right? This small cap growth area. But right now it's just not identifiable on our chart. So you can dive into the IWM and kind of look for some names. So if I pull up IWM here, which I have, right? I, these are all the names in there. You see this little thing in here? This is pretty amazing. You're going to see some buy bullish alerts and some bearish alerts, right? I have an incredible way to kind of quickly look at what's going on. Now, this is, you know, uh, proprietary to our system, but I got a lot of things happening here. Look at these estimate revisions, you know, on ACAD, AEHR, which has been breaking out. We went from neutral bullish. You see an earning surprise. Pretty amazing, right? And so a lot of information at your fingertips here. Uh, I'll go back to the workspace here and I'll do the same back on SPY. So I pull up SPY. All right, I see a lot of bullish names here, 190 names. That's pretty heavy. But if I go in here and start to look and see what's really giving me any kind of signals, what am I seeing? I'm seeing some airlines oversold. If I pull up UAL, if I double click that, I'll pull up United. I'll go back to the one year and boom, I got an oversold buy setup. Now, uh, I believe they got earnings coming out in a few days. So you want to be careful with this one, but it is set up pretty nicely. It's pretty amazing uh, to see. Again, I'm not making any recommendations here. I'm just calling out chart patterns and you know what's happening. And over here on some of our lists, we do have um, a list here, earnings hot list. So I'm going to look at that upcoming earnings list as well. Right. And I got American Airlines on here. But look at this. If I go in here, I have a lot of bearish alerts in the upcoming earnings list. That's interesting to me. Right. I don't know if it's telling me anything why or exactly what's going to happen on all of these names. But I see a pretty interesting divergence of bullish alerts versus bearish here bearish being the winner and but the two names that have some interesting setups are, again are united uh and here this is abt abbott labs again over you know relative strengths negative but we are bullish on the name so fundamentals look better than technicals at the moment you can see technicals are certainly neutral but earnings and, and financials are a little bit more bullish if i pull up financials i could see some return on equity and some decent setups here but nothing again that's automatically saying buy sell or uh, or hold at any situation here at all but you could see some of these names that are coming up specialty retail auto nation we know car dealers have been doing incredible here in the, in the last couple of weeks but that's just you know sort of a trend that's kind of identifying itself and uh you know with some individual names not every car dealer is doing the same thing but it's pretty close. So you have to understand, we've got some interesting lists here. I like to kind of look and see if I'm getting any kind of setup here that looks like it gives me an edge. I maybe have a few things here with power gauge alert. I got an estimate revision on this name, which is uh, actually uh, a bearish stock, but people, uh, you know, our power gauge has upgraded uh, the earnings uh, setup. And so it's interesting. So I think you want to just take a look at some of these names, again, from a, from a charting and a technical basis, see what's happening here, but that's a list of some names here. I'll scroll through them that are upcoming earnings. You can see how we're rating them and if there's any buy or sell signals on there at all. Some sells, some buys, as we, as we talked about. All right, I wanted to go over this ratio here. This is the Vanguard uh, mega cap growth over the Vanguard mega cap value, right? Symbols MGK uh, over MGV. Again, a ratio chart showing a change in trend Guess when? Right here in April, when you can see these crossovers, this is the 50 over the 200. Um, and you can start to see what happened here in the S&P. The S&P started to rally around that point. We broke that high that we set in February. We were pulled back. And then once we were above that high, which really took a while, if you really think about it, it took till the end of May. But this particular ratio had a really interesting setup and was kind of identifiable, right, about mega cap growth. We knew some of the names that were mega caps were running incredibly well already, but I just like to look at ratio charts to give me an understanding of when did it start? Like, what did it look like? And I look at this as sort of game day films, or should I say uh, after game day films, right? You want to look at, you know, when I played football, Monday was film day, right? We'd come in, we look at what we did on Friday or Saturday when we played, and we go over and work on some things, right? That we didn't execute properly and if you have that same situation now if you've got fomo you've missed some markets go back and look at charts and say where could i've seen something where could i've done better and were there any tells any signals here that gave me an edge and one of these is right in, right on the screen right now right you see the dollar 
rolling over, you see the net, uh, the S&P starting to move higher, and you see this ratio, again, from growth over value, giving you an, a signal, just like it gave you a signal on the downside here, right, back in February 2022. So over a year on the downside, and then started to turn right here in that April timeframe. All right, I'm jumping back and forth here because there are some things here I wanted to talk about. Now, I, I called out the software names, geez, I don't know, a few weeks ago. There's a double top here, really a triple top and kind of rolled over. So on this breakout, I think this is really, really compelling. And again, re really easy thing for me to do here on the Chaken system is I can get, just click on the XSW. I'm going to get most of the names in here uh, that are obviously US-based and that ones that we cover. And we do cover a lot. And look at the ratio on here, bulls to bears, 110 bulls, one bear, 38 in the middle, right? And if I go and look at to see my alerts here, what do I got? Anything interesting here? Kind of. A lot of, lot of interesting setups here. Uh, momentum breakouts, money flow buys. You can see some of these. There's a power gauge alert. This one went from neutral to bullish. And here's an estimate revision, right? How about that? M-A-R-A, -A, right? We know what that is, right? That's Marathon Digital. Uh, interesting setup. It's rolling over a little bit today, down 2%. But something that's kind of interesting, they got earnings in August, but something to look out for, right? Not something to run out and take any action on unless you're so intrigued to do so. So you look at some of the names in here, like a Microsoft that's reporting, I believe, next week, right on the 25th. Uh, really interesting setup. It's been a great tell here back in February or so. Just when we started to see some of those mega caps change trend, here's one of the big names, Microsoft, right, that's being rebalanced out of the queues. That also changed trend as well. So just keep an eye on that ratio that we talked about. And then identify, you can go in this ETF and see what's inside those ETFs and then see which ones are also changing trend, right? And that's simple to do if you have the chicken system as well. Okay, uh, I wanna talk about this indicator here. You know, this really not really an indicator, it's sort of a zone um, that I dub the White House uh, buy zone between 67 and 72. Why did I name it that? Well, that's what they said they were going to do back in October. And look, it's really not broken down below that level. And so energy, when you start to see OIH and all these names start to break out, you have to kind of sort of wonder, again, the why is what you wonder about, right? We can see what's happening, right? We know the when, right? And we know the what, right? The why is just something that comes out later. But the point of this is, is that this area is absolutely support until it isn't. And obviously, this long-term trend has been hit now. I give this an area of an opportunity to say that's been a trend. That was certainly a double top at around 93. Can't believe I'm talking about those high numbers on oil still. But here we are sitting in just below 80, just, just above 75, again, hitting that trend. But let's see if that rolls over here and then gets back into the zone and see if it does it again and see what happens. Maybe it's going to form a wedge here and then really break out one way or the other. I got a name here I wanted to talk about, you know, um, we know it well, uh, Tesla, right? Up six and change here today. Now, again, I had put a tweet out just the other day that we were just doing some work internally. This is from April 9th, this chart, maybe a little blurry, but I'm showing it anyway. And I kind of identified an area of $200, right? And a plus or minus 100 points either way as two targets, right? If it had broken down, it would have potentially continued uh, but I did have a relative strength change here to the upside that was kind of alerting me and saying, look, this looks like it's obviously moving higher. Now, that was a fake out. We got a bit of a shake out here, moved lower. But once it broke the 200 and the relative strength was in line, this was off to the number, right? That's sitting at around 280 when I took a snapshot of that chart. And here we are up another six and change, uh, pushing 287. And what was the high of the day? Looks like 292. Um, is 92 points an interesting target uh, that you can say that was achieved? I think so, from 200. But um, the point is, is that it was identifiable and it was right there. And so the last thing I want to look at is the thing we talk about, um, you know, repeatedly. And if you're new to this, this channel, um, thanks for listening. If, if you're not, if you're uh, sort of someone who's continuing to, to listen, this could be a, a bit of a repeat. But this is a new chart that I built. And um, I want to go over it. I think I think you'll find it interesting. So let me find it here. Obviously, the dollar is what I'm talking about. That's the indicator that I wanted to kind of go over and, and look at versus the uh, NASDAQ. So here's the NDX and the dollar topped out. 
right? In 2020, the index bottomed. When it rolled over, the index rallied, right? When the dollar started to rally, the NDX topped, it rolled over. And when the dollar topped, the NDX started to move higher. I don't know if this is a guaranteed uh, indicator. It certainly doesn't seem to be. But what's happening is, is at different levels, uh, the NASDAQ and, and technology names are reacting. You can go back all the way to 2016 and see a similar setup here, but at different levels, right? The dollar is trading at 103 and moved all the way down to 88. And while the NASDAQ was starting to move from about 5,000 up to about 7,000 or so, right? A huge move, right? Between those two years, maybe because of the dollar, but certainly because of all of a ton of other things. But this is just one of it that's directional in nature that kind of gives you an edge, maybe gives you more confidence in what you're seeing in other indicators, right? And so we talked about this on the FANG index a few times. Let's just look back here. This is the chart I was looking for. So I've got the pre-pandemic high on the FANG index, the FANG plus index was around 39.21. It rallied we did see rates start to creep up slightly, but we knew rates were going to start in the end of 21 and 22. The Fed was signaling it loud and clear. We didn't, it was not a surprise. When that started, the dollar started to move higher. And when that started, the sentiment in this particular index cooled off. So we see it once again on the upside. Now, this is what I mean that things happen at different levels. Right, the rates did not have to go all the way back to one or one and a quarter percent for the FANG index to move higher. I think that's where a lot of people get hung up on. Well, how could this happen if rates are so high? It's the sentiment. It's the future. It's the idea of a flattening situation rather than a rapidly rising one. Right. And so, what did the dollar do? The dollar rolled over again from about I forget exactly what the high was. Um, it was up there pretty high around the 112, 114 or so, and it's trading right under par or 100. It's at 99.61 as of Friday. It might even be lower today. But my point is, is that what happened in that time frame is the FANG actually got put in a new high. The FANG plus index put a new high in, even though rates didn't get back to where they were. It's not always a one-to-one -one correlation where it has to go back where it was to start over. That's the, I think, the way you have to read this one indicator, again, it's just one indicator that you use in a toolbox of indicators, but this one was pretty telling. I showed it three different ways today, and I hope it makes sense and, and helps you in the future. All right, in closing, folks, I want to say thanks again. Again, follow me on Twitter. You'll see some other kind of fun stuff that's coming out. I'll throw some charts out, some things I'm looking at. I had a screen. It was called Fade the Rally. Go take a look at it, and you'll see some of the names I was talking about on there as well. Uh, but again, thanks for tuning in. Throw me a like here on the YouTube video below. Really appreciate it. We'll be back next week. Take care. Have a good one.